Okay, so this is the first project that we're going to build as a class that actually is building something kind of interesting that's not a demonstration circuit like lighting an LED. Uh, this is going to be building a light sensitive switch. Uh, it uses a sensor and it lets us work with a pot and a photoresistor and a transistor and a relay. So as we do this uh, quick review, um, we need to keep straight the properties, the electrical properties we're manipulating. Uh, in the water metaphor, the water pressure is the difference in electromotive potential between two places in the circuit, and that's measured in volts. We could say there's so many volts between here and there in the circuit. The flowing electrons in the water metaphor is the uh, determined by the diameter of the pipe. It's like how many electrons are flowing, and those are that flow is measured in amps or milliamps. Components that can impede the flow, that's in the metaphor, it's pinching the hose, that's called resistance, and it's measured in units called ohms. Let's start by checking out the component that's going to do our actual sensing, which is a photosensitive resistor. It's a unit that has on its surface a little zigzag pattern of cadmium sulfide. Cadmium sulfide, or CDS, has this property of when it has light shining on it, it allows much more a much more free movement of electrons through it, so it effectively reduces its resistance. And when there's shadow on it, where there's fewer photons exciting the material, then its resistance goes up. We should start by measuring this. We can see the range of our CDS cell. You might have a couple in your kit, and so please measure both of them, and measure them in light and in shadow, and see what is the highest amount of resistance. That's when you can make it as dark as possible. And what's the lowest amount of resistance you can measure in ohms on your meter. I would recommend the 200K range and see uh, what you can get as the lowest resistance. And when you get those values, write them down on a piece of paper and pause this video and go back into the Zoom meeting and we can talk about what you found. Next, let's put that photoresistor to work and recreate the experiment we did last week where we were dimming an LED with a changing resistance uh, by hooking up either the photoresistor from plus and then through the LED to ground or the other way around through the LED from plus to the photoresistor to ground. Uh, either one of those will both affect it the same way and let's change the resistance on the photoresistor to dim the LED. Again, this is using the resistance as a current limiting resistor. It's not really changing anything about a voltage and let's verify this by measuring the rails as we are dimming the LED. So we see that there is actually some fluctuation here. It's a 0.01, that's a hundredth of a volt. So it's not significant change that's happening in voltage. What's changing is the current passing through the circuit. What we need is a variable voltage, and we can get that by creating a voltage divider. A voltage divider has two resistors or resistances in the circuit, and we are measuring at a midpoint between those two resistances. Let's call those resistor one and resistor two, or R1 and R2. And let's call our total volts in our source, which is five in our, our wall ward and nine if it's a nine volt battery. Let's call that Vn or the total volts in. Uh, the voltage out is what we get if we're measuring from the voltage division point and ground. And between that point and ground, uh, we can calculate how much V out is as Vn times R2 over R1 plus R2, or the simple way to do that math in our heads is if we imagine that they're both 100 ohms, R2 would be 100, and it would be over R1 100 plus R2 100, or 200, so 100 over 200, or 1 over 2, or 1 half. So if they're both equal, then V out is going to be half the voltage of V in. Let's start by making a voltage divider with our photoresistor and a fixed resistor, a 10K, that's brown, black, orange. Wire the photoresistor between plus and any row on your breadboard. It doesn't matter, just an arbitrary row. And then wire a fixed resistor between that same row and ground. If we measure the voltage between that voltage division point and ground, we'll find that as the proportional amounts of resistance change between R1 and R2, we're getting a changing voltage out. Since in this configuration, the photoresistor is R1, um, and R1 is how much work has to be done before getting to the voltage division point, when I make the resistance go down by shining light on the photoresistor, 
it makes R1 small compared to R2. And remember, the voltage out in a voltage divider is a result of the proportional amount of work that's been done getting to that voltage division point in the middle. If I swap the order, so the fixed resistor is connected to plus, making it R1, and the photoresistor is connected to ground, which makes it R2, then I see that the behavior of our circuit reverses, so it's putting shadow on the photoresistor that makes the voltage out increase, and light on the photoresistor makes the voltage go down. And since the proportion that I'm getting here is a relationship between a 10K resistor and the range of my photoresistor, if I swap the fixed resistor for a different fixed resistor, you can experiment with all the different sizes of resistors, you'll see that you're getting different ranges because it's changing the proportionality between the two resistances. If I use the variable resistance that happens between the wiper, the middle leg, and one of the outer legs of a pot, I can change these ranges without swapping out fixed resistors. Since in this circuit I want to make sure that the pot never goes all the way to zero, I'm going to add a 100 ohm resistor that's brown, black, brown before the pot in series. So my range is actually going to go from 100 ohms up to uh, 100K plus 100 ohms. And I can measure on my meter the different voltages that I'm getting in different ranges as I rotate the pot and also put light and shadow on the photoresistor. The second part of this project is the switch, and I'm accomplishing the switching using a transistor. Uh, it's a NPN bipolar transistor. The part number is a 2N2222, but any common NPN bipolar will work. This transistor will switch on and let current flow through a load coming into its collector and then going out the emitter to ground if it has a little bit of current going through the base and out the emitter. So that's called base emitter current, and I'm putting in this 100 ohm resistor to just make sure that that current can't get too high because it can burn up the transistor. That's why the 100 ohm resistor is there to protect the transistor. If there's about 0.6 volts or more at the base, then that will cause the transistor to switch on, so I can demonstrate here. And the purpose of the voltage divider is to create a voltage swing that goes from below the switching threshold when the photoresistor is in the light to a shadow from my hand causing the voltage to, to sweep up so that it crosses that threshold and turns on the transistor. When the transistor switches on, we want it to energize the coil of a relay and close a switch in the relay, which will allow current to go through an LED through the switching part of the relay. So here's a picture and a description and a circuit diagram of the project. If you want to pause, you can look at that. Um, I'm also showing close-ups here so you can see the whole uh, circuit up close, I hope. There's the voltage divider part, the sensor part, um, that connects over with a wire from the voltage division point to the base of a transistor. The collector is in the same row as one leg of the coil of the relay, the other leg of the coil is connected through a red wire to plus. So whenever the tr transistor switches on, it lets current go through the coil, switching the relay on. And I've got an LED going through the normally open pins for the double pole, double throw switch. And applying power and testing, it uh, in fact should work. You can make subtle adjustments with the pot to adjust the range to get uh, greater or less sensitivity. Have fun playing with the circuit.